school grades. According to my sister, she saw something lying there like a rag. But on her return, she realized the thing was moving. The whole house was cemented, so we heard her shouting that she seen something outside. Shamo then ran out to see what it was, because my sister was claiming she saw a snake. That day, his senior brother came to visit us. I was the one who received him after I left him in the hall. But there was light out, so Shamo said on his way back, he saw him standing in the middle of the living room. And that is when I believe he did whatever he did. They were having issues about a car he bought for him and the house he bought and was demanding it back. That's how he developed hatred for him and did whatever he did. It wasn't easy for me at all because we just came back from abroad and just two weeks after the incident occurred, he wasn't sick. He only complained of not feeling well and drove himself to the Kainkwe hospital. We came back and he requested for light soup. Whilst I was preparing the soup, then suddenly I heard him choking in the throat. It wasn't easy. He just suddenly choked. It just happened about 1 p.m. in the afternoon. He was at the dining and I was in the kitchen. So he was watching me whilst I was cooking. So I had to rush out half naked to call my neighbors. So it was neighbors that came to help me to take him to the hospital. I was in my house when I heard shouts of help from Shamokwe's residence. So I rushed out, we came and then we realized that Shamo was in distress. So I quickly called a neighbor, we put him in the car, and then I put his wife in my car and drove behind the first car and we sent him to Kapoha Hospital at Community 2. So when we got there, they took him in and they asked that we all stay out. Immediately I sensed there was something wrong because if not, they would have allowed us to go inside. So, but at that time, my focus was on Tina, Shamu's wife, because she was so young and she was clearly in distress. So I held on to her, tried to calm her down. Then a nurse came out and told me that I should take Tina home. And I said, no, you can't just ask me to take her home. We've brought her husband here. If there's anything going on, at least we should be told something. She said, no, take her home. And I said, no, I can't take her home. You have to say something to us. So uh, the then, um, I think, director of GPH, Mr. Gali, he was at the hospital. So he came out and he held me and said, we've lost him. So take the lady home. And I said, okay, thank you. So I told her, they are taking care of him, so let's go home. We were actually home waiting for him to come. So the news came out when I saw my mom yell in the hall when um, a couple of elders came in just to break the news to her. Okay, yeah, so that's how I got to know that. But I was, I was little. Okay, I was little. I didn't know what death was, but the mere fact that they were yelling, crying, anybody started wearing black, red, people started marching to our house, making noise, all the jama and all those things. So, like, it could tell that, yeah, a big tree has been uprooted. There was nothing wrong. I don't think uh, we all suspect that he would die, you know what I mean? Nothing. Monday or Sunday, I think Sunday or Monday, the news came out. So I rushed to Tema to go and find out. 
I couldn't believe it. I want to see by my eyes when I went. He was lying down there. There was a mystery around his death. It was a Sunday evening when I remember very well uh, going to bed with my newspaper. The news broke. Everybody was outstanding in this country. Everybody was shattered. Somewhere we never knew what killed him or what happened on that fateful day he died. Shamo stays in the house with his wife and in-laws. We were not there to be able to say what exactly happened to him. What happened was that his elder brother came demanding for keys to a car he bought for him, and he refused to give it back. That was when an argument ensued. And Shamo told him that he has bent the talisman he kept in the car because his driver already told him about it. Brother Angrily left the house. According to him, he was going to report Shamo to the medicine man who gave him the talisman so that he can direct any consequences of the incident to Shamo. The snake we saw was not too big. The boy who even killed it was just about the age of my son Benjamin. He just smashed it in the head with a pestle and killed it. Just a corner, a lock, a seize at once. That's all. Last Granny, you need to get a good one in you, sir. A bar or no more, my dear. He came to see our father and called all of us for a meeting. He hinted of planning something for us all. Three days later, I heard the bad news while on fishing in the central region. I really felt so sad. This is a man that saw the rise and death of Shamokwe. He was a gifted player from infancy, and one could easily see that. He sometimes went to bed with the ball under his armpit. He will also play always, even without any playmates around. Anglican. At stage four, at the Anglican primary school, he stopped. He concentrated just on his footballing career. This money fee. Be a it's a fishing house, on a fishing house. Most money you be in a I have a Nashka, a Nashka. No, here a me school job. Ne a small keke a na loe and show na no be ekpa school be e a bon we. This place is a fishing house where everyone goes fishing to make money. So that contributed to his lack of interest in schooling. He quit school during the fishing season so he can make some money. Then during the inter-school season, he will go back because so many schools chased him to play for them. Normally, they come for him and forcefully register him in their schools because of his footballing talent. Due to this, he ended up attending virtually all the busy schools in Tama Newtown. He finally joined the Denbert School team in Newtown named Soccer Angels. Though smallish amongst the players, he was always a judged man of the match after every game. This made him very popular. Then big teams started chasing him. They take him for two or three weeks. Then we go for him during tough matches. This and everything indicated that football was part of his destiny. After quotes, has babies came for him and kept him in arrears because he was too young to join the senior team. man of the match. No, it was a popular. Ni na kanta me me nyese. Ah, na kanta me atwa neke kos ni ne bose kume ye gan. Neke jinyami jinyami ke ekume ekume ame twa. Ame babi e ni ame ke waba yu e ke ame wole keti. Ote Togo, ete tre. Mo jaja waba na ga atwa munti. We went to Togo in '83 and came back. 
When I arrived out, we were told about a gala at Jamestown. So we played and stayed for about two weeks. That was when the Hearts of Folk management saw him and came for him. Those smallish amongst the players, he was always a judged man of the match after every game. This made him very popular. Then big teams started chasing him. They take him for two or three weeks. Then we go for him during tough matches. This and everything indicated that football was part of his destiny. After quotes, has babies came for him and kept him in Auras because he was too young to join the senior team. She now I register. I'm a register. I'm a guy no me. Ehi, I'm a Aurora. Say until another year. Beni meni. I'm a say naka musical youth. Has has also say musical youth. Now I'm a she. I'm a onupa. I say. When Yautama Klo came on board, uh, 23 players, senior players, were given the exit of the team. So they have to recruit new boys. And uh, myself and the late Shambo were then from court and some few others. It was the supporters. They look at uh, our performance and how we were able to match the likes of Kotoko Giants, Frimpon Manso, uh, Emmanuel Ampia, uh, 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 Joe Debra, Michael Osei, and the rest. Okay? They were more experienced than us. They were in the system. They were playing the Premier Division before we came but uh, we were able to match them. So they named the group the Musical Youth. I played with him for a season before I left the country and I, I went with him to the Olympics 92. Olympics 92, he was part of the team here. Yeah. Uh, uh, but when I played uh, with, we were played with him at House of Food, that's when I, I, I saw the best out of Shamo. And I came to House of Folk. I met Shamo Kwe and some few other stars in House of Folk. And he was my favorite player, you know what I mean? And uh, he had a contract to go outside the country. And uh, he wanted to go, you know, he wanted to go. And I said, OK, you can go. And he, w he went outside the country. I think he, he went to Norway or somewhere to stay for two years, and he came back. When he came back, I cried Great Olympics Adekoka was trying to change him up to take him to Great Olympics. And I said, no, Shamo, you belong to Accra House of Folk. You are my player. I was then, I think, uh, I was director of operation. You know what I mean? I wasn't the chairman or the vice chairman. And he stayed with uh, me and I, uh, the late Alaji House. We have to go to the family in Tema at the fishing port to talk to the father and uh, he listens to us and uh, we have to register Shaman Kwe back in Accra House of Folk. And he started playing, you know, surprises in Kumasi, I think. When we are down, he played one of the best matches in Kumasi. He was good and uh, he respected a lot. He was one of the best footballers I have ever met. He did very well for House of Folk. And uh, he got married to the lady. He had a boy, a girl and a boy. And he has a very nice wife. We used to exchange, we used to go and visit each other, you know. I go to Tema. You know, when he, bought, when he came back from outside, he bought a house where they are staying now. He bought a house. This is what some teammates of Shamokwe had to say about him. Hey, Leda. Uh, there's so many words to describe uh, Shamo Leda. Simple. He was phenomenal. You know, he was phenomenal. On and off the pitch. 
we're all praying for him to 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 go outside because the talent then uh, uh, he was exhibiting you know uh, he you don't need Shamu to be in, in, in the country. You need him to go outside for people to see what he, he, he was capable of. He's one of the best uh, player that uh, uh, Ghana has produced. You know, beyond reasonable doubt, by all standards. So I mentioned Shamu Kwe. The name, you know, can hit every door. But if I should start from uh, his childhood, where we started, we won't finish. But Shamu was uh, a legend. Uh, his name, you know, will reign forever. Yeah, no one can get a great player. In the legend of one, Shamu can grow. Baba can touch the touch. He 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 can touch my friend, last minute. Shamor was so good. We argue about who is the best since we play from opposing end. He strikes and I keep the post. He once scored me a nice goal. He took the ball from the left flank, dribbled to the right and back to the left. So while dribbling back to the right, he just chipped the ball over me into the post. I was in a wonderland. That goal just ended the game. Some of the matches we played, you know what I mean? He would tell you, look, chairman, don't worry about it. I'm going to score goals and I will surprise you. And he does it. And I recount two incidents. When he played against Accra Great Olympics at Accra Sports Stadium, and Richard Kingston was in the post for Accra Great Olympics, and Shamuk got the ball around the center circle, beat two men, and saw Olele Kingston off his mark, chip the ball over his head into the net. The whole stadium went into a rapturous response, and I saw Olele applaud Shamokwe. The Olympic supporters who were behind the post all applauded Shamokwe. Again, I witnessed another incident at the Lankley Sports Stadium against Gophils. When Shamu again got the ball in the last third of the pitch, went around, three defenders mesmerized everybody, chipped the ball into the net, and again, the opponents applauded him. He was so wonderful that I remember in one of those matches, particularly against Asante Kodoko, I named him the Shamo leader for his tenacity and was an embodiment of vibrancy, of vivacity and sprightliness. Shamo was called a leader boy because of his footwork. Shamo, na can you draw le no kome? about the dream. Shamu born is to have his dream. Shamu was blessed with dreaming about everything he will achieve in a game. He always recited the Psalm 95, 91, and 23 for fortification. I haven't seen Shamu hold even hips or any black magic before. As for some powdering his face, the House of Oak family can best explain. It's some snake you saw. Because when I got away here, Pada won't dabby. They know this and it. Pada, I didn't check. I asked you about you and no quality. They know. I asked you about you. Any Pada. Yes, I'm okay. Yes, yeah. Pada, I didn't know any Pada. I got a movie. I'm okay. If you are boy, she need. It is not black magic. The powder will just be there for all to apply a little for psychological game purposes. Since he is always the last person, he will pick and splash the remaining powder on his face. It was nothing. It's just for psychological purposes. Team managers of Accra Hatter Folk at the time recounted their shock at the news of the passing of the star player, Shamokwe. It was a big loss for House of Folk and the national team. If Shamokwe is alive today, 
I think he would have been one of the best coaches in the country. Since the history of us, is among few three, the best three that has, have got so far. I've never met a player more affable and more humble than Shamukwe. On and off the field, a very honorable personality who transcended the team that he played for, that is Hearts of Oak. And he was so admired by the whole nation that when he even played against his opponents, he was applauded. Shamukwe's impact in Ghana football, apart from he, his playing career, apart from helping the uh, black meteors to win a medal, uh, from, uh, apart from playing the blasters, apart from playing for Kwanasa folk, and all those things, the most significant impact I think Shamokwe made will be the issue of transfer. Shamokwe left behind a wife and two children. Oh, it's a miracle. Because by then, it's a waiting. Yeah, Okanta, Apostle, so I mean, in ba. Three days time, the more roadside, me, ya, ga. Oh, in Lele. Our meeting was by miracle because I went to waiting at Okanta in Suhum. Three days later, I was by the roadside looking for a car to Accra. He drove past me and came back. He was with his friends, but I didn't know who he was. He was with his friends, but I didn't know who he was because I'm not a football person. He picked me and drove me straight to Makola. I showed him where I live. That very evening, he visited me in my house. My mom was very hard on us. He hardly allows us to speak to strangers. But strangely, when I told her I had a visitor that day, she welcomed them and gave them a good reception. Shambo met Etina when we joined Accra House of Folks and he's my colleague everywhere. Sometimes people even mistaken Shambo to me. Instead of mentioning his name, then they say Abladukuma. Sometimes it's a, instead of mentioning Abladukuma, they say Shambo Kwe. You know, so we are more than twin brothers, okay? So we were from uh, training and he asked me to, you know, pass by uh, around First Junction area. But he saw the ladies, Tina, and he said, look, uh, I want to talk to her. Shamu, that is what Shamu says, he says, I want to talk to Tina. What they talk about, I don't know. But later on, I realized they have become friends. And then it's move on, on and on and then they got married. His son, Benjamin Abekwe, who was just some few months old, is all grown up now and also plays football like his father. I heard my dad was a great footballer. He was a good person. Yeah, I, I was able to watch only one video of him when he played in Barcelona 92. Growing up, before I even knew my dad was a footballer, or oh, yeah, everything was about football. I play up front as a second striker, play on the left wing or the right wing. I play for my school team. I was, I was assistant captain to my secondary school. I have a good goal ratio. In about 10 matches, I'll be able to score, let's say, six. I'm a, I'm a right footer, but I use both feet. It will be a dream for me to play in a class of folk. But I also like to play in a team like in Thailand, uh, to my youth. Of course, I like to play for Manchester United. <laughs> I like to play for Bayern, Real Madrid. For my colleagues, most people didn't know about Shamukwe. It was more of my teachers and my sports masters, Daniel Shamukwe. So I had this special treatment in school. You know, anything I did, if I was in trouble, I wasn't feeling well. How they attended to me was was good. <laughs> The eldest daughter of Shamokwe just graduated from the law school and she speaks about the little memory she has of her father at that tender age. My dad and myself were like very close because anywhere he goes, when he was like we were in Ghana, anytime he's going for his trainings and stuff and then I'm around, 
he'll go with me. When he's going for his beach trainings, I go with him. So virtually, I was all over him. You know, I was the daddy's girl as at that time. So I, I missed that whole, you know, father-daughter relationship. Mr. Reza called me a little more shamwake a bee. Later, Danny, he had turned in like as one married shamu. Oh, I'm sorry, and I can know. Mr. Harry Zako came to our aid. He really helped in catering for the children, especially in their education. He promised and he delivered on the promise. I'm an infant, I went to the university level. He done well. Well, I saw nobody was coming forward and they come from a very poor home, you know what I mean? I decided to adopt them, you know what I mean? Take them like my children. And I did. I took them when they were even two years, one year old. I took them, uh, paid uh, their f school fees. I put them in SOS in Tema, you know what I mean? I put them in good school and they were doing very well, you know, especially the girl was good. And uh, I see them every two weeks. They come to visit me. If I'm in Accra, they come to bus stop to see me and they talk to me, I play with them. You know, Christmas, I do my best, you know. I took them like my own children, you know what I mean? And they have so much respect for me. She calls me daddy. Member of Parliament for the Ododo Diodio constituency, Nilante Vanderboy, was a bosom friend of the late Shamokui and an active sports journalist of the Ghana Broadcasting Corporation at the time. He reminisces some interesting moments with the legendary player, Shamokui. I've never seen any Ghanaian footballer with that creative ability more than Shamokwe. No. He does wonderful things with the ball that beats comprehension. Shamokwe became close to me because he was very close to Ezekiel Lamu, who was almost like my junior brother because we used to stay in the same house, we were living in the same room, we were sleeping on the same bed. So I was in Legon when they fully registered for a class of folk. And any time they came to camp in Legon, Shamokwe, Eben Dubate, Ezekiel, Joado, and um, Moses Kofi and the rest, uh, and then Emmanuel Kwashi Abega, they would leave their room, come to my room, we sit down, we chat, they would eat from my room, they would eat all my milo, and all, they would drink all my tea and the rest. And, <laughs> And they go away. We sit down. We, we sometimes we, we, we do a lot of training together because they also knew me as a footballer. We would chat and walk around and all those things. So we became so close. Mm -hmm. Shamo was a man of his words and peaceful. Just do what he tells you and everything will be fine. No, I am, man. Oh, yes, I'm only number free. Oh, he's my good friend since a long time before I haven't come to the house. He was my old man before I come to the house. So I just love them. It was a nice uh, a, 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 a ten, number 10 for House of Hope, and I'm also House of Hope supporter. So I love them throughout from that. Ghana has lost a great, a great player indeed. Yeah, he was one of the greatest players has have ever had. And we need such players to raise the image of the club. So a very great player now. Or funny Bobo in Diagro. Now our boy or man also I would be dear be dear or Nibo Bomu. We want that that this generation should play like the local players, to groom talent like him. And maybe fill the stadium because I remember those days they fill the stadium with the inclusion of Jodebra, Kuma, Makose, those, those players were, were players that can convince someone, whatever he is, to come to the stadium. And Shamo, with his exceptional style of playing, and as a, as a model of Tema, Newtown, myself from Tema, is something that we cherish and we love him. So I'm a Kotoko fan, but I've always been in love with Shamo because of the competitiveness that he gave. And any time he played for both the Black Stars or Hearts of Oak, we realized that, yes, he was a person that you could never, ever leave. He was really an inspiration to all of us. So when we lost him, it was a big blow 
to all of us. November 30, 1997. Death laid its icy hand on the 26-year-old footballer, the attacking magician, the controller of the field. Shamo Leather is gone. Gone, but not forgotten. On behalf of the family, Accra Heart of Folk, the Ghanaian Sports Fraternity, DTV Sports Plus, and the Ghana Broadcasting Corporation, we say the memory of this legend continues. What I do know is that he's, he's physically absent from us, but we connect with his spirit, with his soul, and he would always live in our memory. Shamo Leather, Wo Ojoban. Shamokwe, continue to rest in perfect peace. Yeah.